Hey, what's going on guys? It's Zed for me and today we're going to be changing the oil in the STI. Changing your own oil is something that is relatively inexpensive to do. You don't need too many tools as long as you can jack the car up and you have a couple of handy tools like some wrenches um, and you have the proper supplies. It's actually really easy to change your own, your own oil and it really doesn't make sense to go out and have your oil changed. Uh, one, because if you pay very little to get your oil changed, like the $20, $25 oil changes, those are all going to be conventional uh, oil and you're not actually getting synthetic. And if you want synthetic, it's going to be something on the order of $75 to $100, which is just a lot. Whereas you can basically get all your own supplies for probably $20, $25 if you shop around properly and you can do your own oil change basically for free uh, as long as you already have the tools ready. So um, the things that I've had to order, the oil, the oil filter, and then um, a crush washer, which is something that um, some people may not necessarily get every single time, but uh, personally, I think it's a really good idea to get. I'll talk more about why in just a little bit. But uh, I got my uh, oil filter and the crush washer from Jegs. Jegs.com is actually a new site that I just found out about, and when they sent uh, this stuff, um, they actually included stickers and, and uh, actually a magazine for me to look through in terms of parts and stuff, and they sell just a load of stuff that I really didn't know, and, and I'm surprised that I actually hadn't heard of this company before, but uh, that's where this time I decided to get my uh, oil filter as well as the crush washer. For the oil, I went with uh, Castrol GTX Magnatec this time. It's a SAE 5W30, which is what this particular car calls for. Um, and in terms of oil weights and whatnot, you can always uh, deviate a little bit uh, depending on your climate and the places where you live. But for me, living in New York, I basically stick with uh, the recommendations of the manufacturer and I actually haven't had uh, any issues at all. Um, so this, back to this crush washer. Basically, uh, when you take your oil, oil drain plug out, as I'll show you in a little bit, uh, th this washer right here is meant when it when it gets tightened to be crushed and basically creates a seal And when something's been crushed already and then you you take out the plug and you put it back in It's not going to create a seal as good as before and so you might be prone to to oil leaks uh, Coming out from the bottom of the drain pan, which is something that I personally obviously don't want and most people I, I assume they won't want that either uh, But this basically is a piece that not everybody always buys they always get the oil and they get the oil filter and then they don't always change the crush washer, but I definitely recommend if you're going to be doing this job to just get a crush washer. And I want to apologize for the wind noise because it seems like there's a lot of it today. Uh, yesterday we just had a nor'easter here, which was a lot of rain and wind, and actually our house lost power for a little bit. Today it seems like the wind's still kind of lingering, so I apologize for any wind noise. So first thing that we're going to do is basically jack the car up. Right after you have the car jacked up to where you can get uh, below the car, you'll want to open the hood and uh, afterwards you're going to start draining up the fluid. I always leave the oil cap loose so that um, it drains out a little bit easier. So we're going to go under the car now. With most newer cars, the under tray needs to be removed in order to access the uh, drain but let's see if I need to for this one so it looks like in my particular case I won't actually need to remove anything as there's a I'll show you underneath the car over here you can actually they basically provisioned a hole for it so that you don't actually have to take out the tray which is nice because then I'll just be able to uh, undo this bolt right here and then I should be able to just drain out the oil like so all right, so this uh, drain plug is actually a 17 millimeter. And if the person before you didn't ruin it for you by tightening it too much, some people tend to do that because they really don't want the oil drain, but it makes uh, oil uh, like leaking, but uh, they should really not over torque these. I did this last, so it shouldn't be too difficult to, uh, to undo. Like so. And you want to keep pressure on it, so that oil doesn't come out until the last second so that you don't get 
it dirty. I'm going to take off my gloves, get my hands dirty for this a little bit, but it's better than getting my gloves soaked in oil. So right until you get to the last, there it is. So pull real fast. And luckily I did it fast enough. So I made a little bit of a mess, but uh, looks like the oil's out. And the next thing that I got to do is uh, swap the oil filter. I don't remember if the oil filter requires the uh, under tray to actually be taken off. All right, so it looks like this under tray needs to be re removed in order to get to the oil filter, but it's just a couple of clips. So I'm going to grab a, let's see, looks like a flathead and then a Phillips and I should be good. Alright, once the under tray is out, you can actually see the blue oil filter. Those are definitely not regarded as the best ones to get for your car. But, uh, I'm going with a Fram oil filter as the extra guard. Uh, I would say, in my opinion at least, it's better than the blue OEM ones. But it's not like amazing or anything. So I'm going to go get an oil filter wrench and uh, we'll get this out. All right, so the old, old oil filter is out. Put the new one in, but before you do, make sure you get a little excess oil and just kind of uh, get the rim of the uh, of the gasket so that when it sits it sits properly and for certain cars like this one where the oil filter is upside down I like to pre-fill this with a little bit of oil so that's what I'm gonna do with the uh, oil that I already have all right now that it's pre-filled with fresh oil now I just have to hand tight this hand tighten this down and once it catches threads it should go in relatively easy and for the last part, just use an old bag or something, give yourself a really good grip, and just tighten it down as much as you can, hand tight. Okay, clean up any excess oil. And now to replace the uh, oil drain plug. To, re to replace the oil drain plug, you basically want to take your old oil drain plug and just swap out the crush washer that's already a part of it. That's this guy right here and there is a washer on it and let me show you the washer. This is the old washer. You can see it's nice and flat. You can kind of tell that one is thicker than the other and the reason one is thicker than the other is because one's already crushed and one isn't. So if you reuse this one there's a chance that your oil could start leaking. It probably won't but it's always safe to just get a new crush washer. So we're gonna put that there and just put it back where it came from. Remember you want to let the crush washer do its job so you don't want to over tighten it. So that's why people who reuse the old crush washers tend to just kind of tighten it down more than it needs to be because they're worried that it might leak. But if you have if you have a crush washer that's new you just have to tighten it down and let the crush washer do its job just like the oil filter gasket did its job. And you can kind of feel as you're tightening this that you reach a point where the crush washer has done its job. Like there. And that's it. No oil will be leaking out of that today. Or tomorrow. Or anytime soon. Now we're going to go up top and just fill it back up with oil. All right, so this particular car calls for 4.8 quarts, which means that uh, my five quart bottle should almost be empty. Now, of course, you don't actually drain out 100% of the oil. So it might take maybe 4.7, 4.6, but basically I'll put about four in and we'll continually check the dipstick. And you want the car to be level during this, which is actually 
perfect for me because my car's my my driveway is a little bit on an incline. So after I have it lifted, the car is actually pretty level. It doesn't have to be hundred percent perfect, but the closer you get, the more accurate the reading. So I'll put in four quarts and then I'll start checking the dipstick and basically wait till I'm between the low and full and that'll be a done job. All right, so let's see. It looks like I've put about three and a half quarts so far. So this dipstick should not be showing at all but you see there's two dots here one for low one for high it should be less than the low I guess at this point but we'll see and as you can see it's not even at the low mark yet so we'll continually be filling it up probably I think between the low and full is a full quart, so that means I can probably still put one more quart in. Alright, let's see where we're at. We are just below the full mark now, which is exactly where we want to be. So we're basically done. So I'm just going to put back on the underbody tray and then replace the oil filler cap. And by the way, we filled up exactly four and a half quarts or just over that. So that's exactly where I expect it to be. You don't want to overfill it. It's almost better to underfill it than to overfill it. Now I'm just going to double check to make sure we're at the right spot again. And we are right, at, right just under the full mark which is where we want it to be. Just give a little bit of leeway each way. And so I'm gonna put the underbody tray back on and uh, we're gonna be done with the job. All right, so that's basically all it takes in order to change the oil on your 2010 Subaru WRX STI. This also applies from 2008 to 2014. And by my guess, because the STI engine hasn't really changed from 2004 onward, the process is going to be relatively the same for any generation of Subaru STI or Impreza from 2015 and before, uh, as well as the newer WRX STIs uh, as well. So basically, do this uh, on your own and you'll be saving yourself a lot of money in the long run because you're supposed to be doing this every three to 5,000 miles. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'm Zed for me. I'll see you guys next time.